give some context on why we are using Angular 2 and how Angular 2 uh, is helping us uh, do during our development. So, so this is the presentation in like two seconds. Okay. So uh, we are going through uh, the context and motivation for uh, choosing Angular 2 because it's an alpha and why are you we using an alpha right now? And um, the enterprise dilemma that we faced when opting for uh, Angular. Why Angular? And then real life uh, examples, some architecture examples that we are using with Angular and some uh, cool features. And then if we have time, we go to daily ops. So what we do? Basically, you have the, the chance to see our booth there. We do um, a manufacturing execution system uh, for uh, companies, basically for plants to help our customers to uh, manage their factories. Uh, typically, our customers are um, in the electronics and solar uh, uh, parts of the industry. So uh, we help build uh, like memory chips, uh, x-ray machines, and so on. Um, so our product is same Navigo, and it, it's basically like a Swiss Army knife for plants. Okay, you can do almost any uh, everything with it, and we are uh, continuously uh, working on uh, on the product. So I have here a video. I don't know if this is gonna work. Mm, maybe not, but uh, you can see it on on YouTube. And uh, it's just to see the the application working. Okay, it's an MAS. It's like uh, SAP for the ones that have used, but for a lower spec of the the plant. Okay, yeah, no worry. So back in 2009, uh, I was not in the company yet, but uh, Silverlight was the future. You know, uh, everyone was talking about Silverlight or Flash. So you could see two great options to go uh, to. Uh, so during these years, we have seen many changes. Okay, uh, back in 2009 and now in 2015, and now the Portuguese case. Okay, Fluribella. Uh, you can see that people change, products change, companies change. Okay, so uh, we were faced with Microsoft pulling the plug on Silverlight, okay? So now Silverlight is the devil and no one wants to use it, okay? So now we have a problem. We need to change our uh, entire GUI because Silverlight is dead. So that is our context. But and to give you some numbers on what we have actually now in Silverlight, okay, it's plus six years of development. Uh, it's about one million and a half lines of code, okay? Uh, more than 30 man years invested in the Silverlight uh, GUI. Many, many hours of partners training to use it and customers, okay? Uh, so you can imagine this is a big investment and now we need to scrap it and, well, start all over again. So, is Silverlight really that? Yeah, unfortunately it is. So, uh, we, we could opt for closing the company or something else, but we went back to the drawing board to try to understand what we really needed from our GUI. So, what we need. Now our customers want us to work on different platforms to be prepared for cloud. This is a big opportunity to invest in uh, software as a service. Uh, to be able to use the application with touch screens or keyboards and mouse, because our application is used either in offices, where you have a desktop or a laptop, but you can also have operators uh, on the shop floor using it, so they have touch screens. Um, and, of course, you can use it uh, and go in mobile, okay? And also, if we can, do not uh, make the same mistakes again, okay? Because six years from now, we hope not being replacing the entire uh, interface yet again. So our answer to it was, well, let's follow standards, because standards um, 
actually um, have been here for several years and are continu uh, continuously being worked so that can be evolved. Okay? So, how can we do that? There is a sentence that I, I appreciate very much. This is this one. Uh, and you can see that the only certainty that there is is that you cannot be certain of anything, especially in the web. In the web, because our, uh, uh, like Victor was saying, uh, we don't know how Polymer will evolve. Uh, Angular One was the best, and then the guys from Google just said, "Forget about it. Let's do a complete rewrite of the Angular, and you have to migrate all of this." Uh, so, one thing we have to do is. We need to build a web interface that will work with or without the framework that we are choosing now. Because five years from now, uh, most definitely the framework that we are using now will be obsolete. So, it's like I don't know if you know the series. Ini mini my nemo can a tiger catch, catch a tiger by the toe. It's like the undolita português. Okay? So, you, you ha we have so many uh, frameworks to choose. Uh, what's going to be the one that we, we will use? We have AngularJS, the first version. We have WinJS, I don't know. Have, has anyone heard about this? Okay. Uh, well, it's done by Microsoft. <laughs> uh, you have React, we, you have Ember, you have, of course, Angular 2, you have Aurelia, it's a big one growing now. So there are lots of frameworks. And from guys being from C Sharp development and Silverlight, uh, we have now to worry about uh, building stuff like package managers. We have uh, Go, SAS, and whatever. You know, th these are just bits of uh, tools that we need to develop the apps. So it's it's crazy to to choose one. What's the best one, and what is the one that is going to be here uh, five years from now? So, the first thing uh, we need to keep cool in these times when choosing frameworks. Uh, and I have the pleasure to be working with an amazing team of engineers. And we all uh, went through prototyping and then we come to the, to the conclusion that Angular 2 was the best one. And why Angular 2? Uh, like um, Victor said, web components are the future. Okay, it's, you can build a large web app and maintain the code at the same time. But uh, you want, you also want things like server-side rendering, okay? Because uh, it's growing and uh, as of now we were using like Phantom GS to do that kind of stuff, but uh, we need to be using it not with Axe, okay? Um, also, performance. We all know that Angular 1 has some performance issues, and is the main reason why the team is rewriting the framework. So performance is, is a big one. Uh, a complete framework helps, because you don't have to integrate many uh, different parts. And y when you have a large team, you need to you have ramp up time for everyone on the team. If you have different platforms, you need a different ramp up time for each of the libraries that you are using. If you are only using one, it keeps the same logic, it's easier. And uh, of course, lazy loading. For huge web apps, we need lazy loading. You cannot uh, like browserify everything in a bundle and put somewhere, because then we'll have like a website with uh, 50 megabytes, and your mobile is going to die. And TypeScript. I don't know how many of you have already used TypeScript. No one? Well, okay, Victor has. <laughs> so TypeScript, it gives you typings on top of JavaScript, okay? You code in TypeScript, and then the compiler transforms that code in JavaScript. It's really cool because it's like C Sharp for the web, okay? You have, you have uh, IntelliSense in Visual Studio, or you have Autocomplete for every function, okay? It can, uh, as you type cards, if you are passing like a number to a function, but it should be a string, it will give you a compile time error, okay? And it's kind of cool use just vanilla Java, JavaScript, okay? But you when, when you have big, big teams and people coming in and coming out, no one knows all the code and no one remembers if the function takes one argument, two arguments, or 
what else okay so typescript is really really good for enterprise apps and i uh, uh, if you uh, don't use it, ever use it you should at least try to use uh, typescript for a small project and and um, um, experiment some things and of course uh, microsoft is working together with angular and i know we are on the google uh, event and we should shouldn't talk about Microsoft then when we you, you go to our customers our customers love Microsoft okay uh, all their enterprise network is built on top of Microsoft services so if Microsoft says it's okay it helps you uh, it helps you sell your product okay and uh, Microsoft is giving a hand on the on TypeScript and um, it's also looking for Angular too so uh, I have here an example of an Hello World in Angular 2. Let's see <coughs> if this works. So this link is online if you want to test it on your laptops. So here we have um, our HTML file, our index HTML. Okay. Uh, we have to import some things about TypeScript and System.js. Uh, you can forget about jQuery and even Demeter because you don't really need it. Okay, it's just here to remind you that you don't need it. <laughs> it's it's common, you know. And uh, well, you load your file, and I'm using a TypeScript file. Okay, so so instead of JS is TS, and you can see your code here, okay? This is a um, ECMAScript say, uh, 6 uh, component, okay? So you do a, a class, it's a JavaScript class with a constructor, and one of the cool things about TypeScript are the annotations, okay? Uh, I don't know if already ever heard about ATScript. It was a language developed by, by Google that was built on top of TypeScript. But then the Microsoft team said, yay, we can, we can do that ourselves. You don't need to create a new language for that. So they implemented that and Google uh, dropped of um, developing AT, uh, ATScript. So what you do, you declare a component with a selector. It's like the LO instance of uh, Victor. Okay, That's going to be the thing that you are going to use inside your HTML. And then you declare a view, and you declare your template. And you can link the, the template to a, an URL and load an HTML file, a separate file, if it's complex, or you can declare it just there. Okay? And then what you see here is that in my HTML file, I'm actually declaring my, the app uh, component, okay? my element. And it's rendering to Hello World. Okay, I'm gonna change here the text for you guys to see. Okay, and Plunker is compiling that, and you can see here the code using. So right now you can use web components that work in all browsers. Okay, except Internet Explorer because but angular 2 will support uh, internet explorer they have some things to work on but they will support it and um it's like like you are seeing here it's pretty simple uh, instead of importing polymer and so on you can just import angular 2 build a component and that's it okay so how cool is that no one really okay so i'm not doing my job very well um someone has a question so let's continue hmm. okay so initial thoughts on this okay uh, we can all agree that it was easy enough to do a component right uh, it's very de declarative you can understand 
the language itself. You don't need to explain it to anyone. It's easy to test. Uh, uh, we have a talk. We had a talk in the morning about um, QA, but uh, it's it's really easy to test, and it's simpler to maintain. Uh, not only because Angular, but also because TypeScript. Um, you you have autocomplete or IntelliSense, and you have compile time errors. I don't know. I know many of you uh, sometimes don't like uh, compile uh, language, but uh, for huge applications, in my opinion, you need a compiler, and it's better to give you uh, a compile error uh, than figuring it out later in production that you have a problem in the code. So, y and you can debug it on Visual Studio. The reality in, in critical manufacturing is that we, almost all of us use Visual, uh, Visual Studio and now Visual uh, Code. Um, and you can debug it inside the, the IDE, so it's nice for us. So, I only talked about the good stuff. Uh, in real life, it's a bit harder to do this. Why? Because right now, the tooling is very, very weak. You have to do uh, most of the compiling and stuff. You need to do it by hand, okay? So you need to manage package installation. You need to uh, manage your typings. Typings are TypeScript files that give you the IntelliSense in JavaScript, okay? So you can go like to, to work like uh, with a jQuery, and, uh, but you have the typings. jQuery is built on vanilla JavaScript, but you have a typings file that gives you IntelliSense over uh, jQuery. So you need to manage that. Uh, you need to manage the compilation the, and you need to, to do the transpiling. Right now we are using ECMAScript 6. So even TypeScript it compiles to ECMAScript 6 and we need to transpile it to ECMAScript 5 to be run on the browser. We need to compile the styles. Okay, We are using less so we need to, to use the compiler for less. And we need to, to do bundles of the packages because we are building modules and we want to uh, put all the components inside a module. We want to build one uh, single package. So to give you, uh, in, t in terms of work, in HTML5 we have like 2,000 lines of code to do this. Okay, And you go to the command line in the, and do gulp build and everything works. Okay. In Silverlight, it was zero. Okay, Visual Studio uh, did that by himself. So examples and documentation. Uh, we are still using an alpha. Okay. Uh, fortunately for you, this week uh, the Angular team made great progress on documentation because they are preparing the Angular Connect. Um, it's a conference in London um, in late October. And uh, now, if you go to angular.io, you can find documentation, okay? That's nice. So, thinking big, going mobile. It's not only about the framework, but uh, it's also about the architecture that you opt for building a large inter uh, enterprise application. We have um, a specific requirement that our customers n need to be able to develop uh, to develop modules for our application. Okay, we have a standard product, but our customers want to do tweaks on the product, so they need to be able to do that. So our architecture um, also um, enables the customer to do customization on our product. Okay, so our modules and the customer modules work integrated. So, our this is an example of our project scaffolding, okay? Uh, we have a core and then we have like modules. Modules are bundles, okay? They contain several components inside of it and you can import them uh, when you need. Uh, the, I think the main advantage of using uh, an architecture like this is that uh, when you open our uh, application, you only need to load one module. That is the module that has the components responsible by the main screen. Okay. When you start to click on things, you are uh, lazy loading the modules that you need. And if you don't think about that from the from scratch, 
when you build uh, when you start to build the application is small and everything works fine but then you have like 50 modules each module uh, has like uh, 600 um, k bytes so you can see how, how this is going and you when you are thinking about mobile you need to pay attention to that uh, otherwise it's it will not work on your uh, mobile phone so what we do we develop the the components but we don't integrate them okay in a application that the user can see then we have a, a project just to do that like victor was saying uh you have a project we, we uh, you have an uh, index html and the only thing that you write there it's your main component it's the starting point of all your application and the motivation for that is that uh, our product needs to work on web android ios and windows phone hopefully hopefully uh, so uh, we need to do different starting points for the application uh, based on the mobile um, that's on the mobile platform that you, we are using because our goal is to use apache cordova to build the components uh, and go native with the mobile apps so about angular 2 and flagship features how many of you have already used angular js 1 okay many of you so you know about dependency injection uh, right now this is as cool as ever let's see if this works again so for those of you that who, who doesn't know what is dependency injection okay basically you are stating that you want to to have a service or uh, on your component and you expect that someone someone else is putting the service available available for you when you need it okay or you yourself are declaring that service and um what we what we have this is this is i think for me this is one of the great advantages of angular 2 over the rest of the um frameworks okay uh, because this is very very simple to test because you can inject your services and when you go to the constructor of your class and you expect the service to be there you can then build mocks of your services and when you are creating the new component you <coughs> pass the mocks to your component okay and you we have here a simple example okay i created a class it's just a simple ecmascript 6 class my service that has a, a very complex function okay and then on your component you say that you want uh, the bindings and it's an array of services and you just put the type of the class not the instance okay um, angular itself will create an instance for you and you will be able to use it here on your constructor okay so my service it's going to be an instance of my service uh, class and then you can call the function yourself okay and everything works so i'm going to change the number here and i have here a, a set timeout so we can see it's five seconds okay so it's lo1 that is the default value and then it's going to be lo4 okay the, L the alert triggered i'm going to do click on okay and it's going to update my template okay so as you are seeing you can do data binding this is one of the ways that you can do data binding i don't know can you see this in the back and um so uh, as of now you you should not use bindings okay the new word is providers they changed this this week so uh <laughs> we need to update this <laughs> but uh, it's the same principle okay just the, the words that are changing so any any doubt about this so one of the coolest things about angular and this is completely different from the angular one is change detection i don't know how many of you have already worked with react 
okay so you know that in, in react when you want to trigger a new change a, a, a re-render of your component you need to call the set state function and that function will trigger a render function okay uh, so there is no scope running in the background no digest that it's going to trigger a render for you okay what they have uh, it's a change detector that it's going to go through all your uh, components in memory and it's going to realize that if, if it needs to change it or, or not, okay? So you imagine like the DOM tree and you go through each and every uh, component and with this what you can do is just say, look, this is a static component. I know that this is once I build the, the first instance of this component, it's never going to change. So we can ch tell the change detector that uh, it doesn't need to check for changes there, okay? So this is increases um, immensely the performance on your app. Sure. Angular 1, the one-time binding does not solve it. Uh, I to, to I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not an expert on Angular 1. Uh, but according to... Savkin, one of the guys on the Google team. Okay, it does not. It, <laughs> but uh, you can. I, you have there are the references, and he, he does a pretty good article explaining the differences and what you can do about this. Okay, and this enables you to use uh, immutable data. I don't know how many of you have already used Closure, but Closure is a, a great um, framework to work to work with immu uh, immutable data. The principle is. Uh, once I create an object, I don't change it. If I need to create a new one, I create a new instance of it, okay? And copy the, the previous uh, properties to the new one. So when it, it's going to compare the two objects, it, it just do a simple uh, comparison between memory uh, pointers, okay? So because you were the first one to make a question, I have a goodie for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I have here an example for you to see this at work. What I did here, and I think I, I went through the web looking for how to do this, and I didn't find many information about this. So this, what I'm showing you, it's not easy to find elsewhere, at least for now. I had to go through the source code of Angular 2 to realize how this works, OK? Uh, So in Angular 2, when declaring your component, you have here a property that you pass uh, an enumeration, okay? That you say that the change detection strategy is on push. So what I'm telling Angular is, I'm gonna tell you when you need to refresh, okay? Uh, otherwise, you just stay put with the, the values that you are rendering right now. So what I do, what, I, what, what I've done here, is like the, the previous example. We have here, we start with an hello world one, and then we have a, a method that will be triggered later on, and I call the change detector ref, okay? And I do a mark for check. The first thing that you need to see here is that to get this, this service, okay, I'm using a dependency injection, okay? I know the framework, it's gonna give me this. So it's going to be here when I need it. And I do a mark for check, OK? If I comment this row, OK, it's LO1. Let's wait five or 10 seconds in this case. Until we see an alert, OK? LO2 is the new message. but it did not change, okay? Uh, if I want that to change, I need to go here and uh, either I delete this row, okay, about the change detection, or I use the default one, okay? I don't, r I can see, okay, I have a typo. If I, w I was in Visual Studio, it could be a compile error, okay? And let's change this for just five. Mm. 
this is the problem with doing live stuff. Or maybe the guys just changed the name <laughs> of the stuff. Uh, where? No, Planka, Planka has some bugs too, okay? So it may not be entirely my fault. Okay, you know, you see, it's loading now. Okay, hello one. Okay, it's gonna change the message, and it did. Okay, so this is awesome for for uh, those of you that are have, have already worked with React and know that one of the the big selling points of React is performance. You could do the same with Angular too, um, and be performant as well. So, any question? Okay. So, I have here a slide show, uh, showing you how we manage the team, okay? Because the problem right now is that working with an alpha, you don't really know if you have a bug on your code or it's a bug on Angular code, okay? And I think it's like 50-50. We can <laughs> encounter Angular bugs as many as the ones that we create. So the first thing that we are doing is we are doing a great job with integrating our um, design team with our development team, okay? And this is really good because the development starts to be uh, with, a, with a cleaner approach to the old problem, okay? With a single uh, approach in terms of uh, user experience, and um, it's working really well. And then you can see here a live example of our schedule for a sprint. We work on with Scrum, and uh, we have the Scrum stuff to do, like sprint planning, and uh, most of the time is dedicated to coding and testing because we don't s uh, separate our QA from from the development. Okay, developers are responsible for doing the um, the code and the test both manually and automatic so this is our company if you want to pass by or just pass uh, our booth and we are almost everywhere right now uh, but our main development center is in Porto in Maya so I don't know uh, if any of you has any question, uh, wants to know more details about Angular 2, and so on. This is not production ready yet. Our production, uh, our first release for production is scheduled for um, uh, late December, uh, beginning of January. So um, we are counting that with the next uh, Angular conference, it's going to go to beta version yeah, next week. And hopefully, by the time we go to production, it's going to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, of course, we are only developing a subset of the entire uh, application. And if it works in our case, that's fine for us. And I have here another goodie, because I can prepare for this stuff. So, <laughs> questions? <laughs> I have. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Marcy. I have a I very strange know, question for you. Roger. <laughs> I have a strange question for you. Uh, the year that Microsoft stopped the Silverlight development, do you send still the, a Christmas card to them? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, we are Microsoft Gold Partner, I think. <laughs> and we sometimes we receive the Microsoft consultants in our offices and we talk, uh, talk with them about this, this kind of stuff. Uh, actually, on the developer's perspective, I, I, know, I know many of you, I don't know if you have already worked with Silverlight, Please don't do that now. But back in the day, uh, in terms of development experience, it's definitely better than the one that we have now with HTML5. Because in terms of 
integrative environment and working with a, a team with high rotation of people, it's easier to work with C Sharp and have the tooling already done. Okay, uh, but I think this is the, the right path, and we are going to get there uh, eventually uh, in terms of tooling. Because and one, I think one of the reasons I think I know many of you will not agree with me, but Microsoft with Visual Studio as one of the best development uh, solutions, of course. and uh, now that Microsoft is looking at this and their guys are working with this, they they will build the tooling. Uh, for this. So in a couple of years, the, the tooling problem that we have now, it's not going to be an issue. What, what was the reason because they throw away the silver lights? Okay, it has to be with security concerns uh, because they are using an API on the, on the, on the browsers and that is a security uh, risk uh, in the browsers. So Google, the last version of Chrome, I think from 44 or 45. They don't support an API anymore. Uh, Firefox is going to do the same. Uh, so I think Internet Explorer will support the Silverlight until 2021. And we are lucky enough to work on an industry-based uh, uh, client that they can control the environments that are set up inside the companies. So we have some time to do to rewrite the entire GUI, but if you were wor working with um, direct to customer approach in the market, uh, we would have issues because no one is using Internet Explorer right now. So yeah, it's going to be a problem. And uh, I'm not out yet. Okay, I have more. <laughs> So, questions? <laughs> so, any, any, any question? Is everyone okay with it? So, if you need anything, uh, I think uh, I have my... Uh, I have this last slide, okay? Uh, Angular, it's, it's really coming. And um, you need... Uh, I think you should look at it. Okay, it's a, it's a good framework. Uh, it's not completely done. It has many issues right now, but with the right mindset, you can you can adapt to it. Okay. So you have my contacts there, and you can find me here for some time. Thank you, Jay. Good talk. Uh, just before we go to our next coffee break, I'm just going to ask you a question. Uh, raise your hands. Who here follows us in any social network? Google Plus, Twitter, Facebook? Okay, half of it. So to, to make this a real community, uh, we're going to ask you to, to start following us so we can deliver you with more events, to ask you for your, your opinion, to ask you for suggestions, to make you part of this. And to, you can also suggest what we will do next and even organize yourself something with our help, with uh, everything we have built so far. So uh, we're going to send it to Slack. Uh, some of uh, our social networks and we're also going to have it here when you come back please don't forget to follow us let's go eat as palmas foi para comer exato exato